every day is a new one. Yeah, well, I've got this suit maker, LGFG, Dimitri, the crazy Russian, and he, you know, pays attention to what I'm doing and makes me the suits that he thinks are suitable. And uh, You've I wear quite them. quite extravagant, though. Like sometimes, like one half of the suit is one color. Yeah. Like it looks like you're getting bored. You just want to switch it up a he lot. He sends me these damn things, and I get them, and I think, there's no way I, I wear that. There's no way I'll wear that. And then I put it on, and I think, huh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Tammy puts up with it, so. Is it know. everyday suits now with you? Is that pretty? I'm in a suit pretty much all the time. You know. So. Is there a reason for that? Well, the original reason was because, um, probably because of my father. He was a teacher, and... Uh, he always wore a suit, even in the 70s, when that started to become, you know, like 1950s thing. And uh, I asked him one time why he did that, and he said it was to show respect for his students. And then when I was a professor, well, when you start to be a professor, you're not that much difference in age from your students to begin with. It's a good way of laying out a demarcation, mm. and that was helpful. That's useful. You know, people like to know how the hierarchies are delineated. Right. And professors like to think that they're everybody's buddy, but that's not the right relationship. And so that was helpful. And then when I went on tour in 2018, you know, I realized that I was going to speak live in front of several hundred thousand people over the course of the tour. And I thought, you got to think when you have an opportunity like that, that if you had the least amount of sense, you'd pull out all the stops. So I bought some expensive suits. And... Then one of the things that happened in consequence of that was that people started to come to the lectures in suits. And so about, I'd say about 40% of the audience dresses formally. And lots of the young guys who come, they tell me when I meet them afterwards in the meet and greets, for example, that they bought their first suit to come to the lectures. <laughs> and so, you know, I wouldn't have ever expected that. And then Dimitri showed up about two years ago with this portfolio of suits. He designed one for each of the rules for my first book, and he put the rule underneath the collar at the back and designed the lining, custom lining on all the suits as well. And so I gave him a crack at it because he'd put so much work into it and and that worked out real well. He's very, very creative. Yeah, that two uh, color suit, there's lamb's wool on one side and goat's wool on the other. It's a heaven and hell suit, so. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah, no kidding, eh? And this is covered with iconography. Um, Christian or uh, Catholic and Orthodox, I've got one of each, and uh, that's because I was out on tour with my new book, for my new book, which is called We Who Wrestle With God, which we will talk about today, I hope. So that's how does, the suit How does story, one wrestle man. with God? Do you I, wrestle with God? It, with every word. So what does that mean? Well, look, <laughs> man. Well, you know, look, what here... Part of the reason that you're so successful, in my opinion, is because you actually say what you think. Like, you're not putting on a show. Actually, you have no reason to put on a show. You put on a whole bunch of shows, and they've already been successful. You know, and you're actually asking the questions that are genuine questions, and people can trust you because of that. And that means that you're letting the words emerge as they come to you, and each of Doing that with each word, that's a decision, you know, because you can use your language to manipulate and you can use your language to, for your own, say, hedonistic purposes or to gain power.